Happy Monday, so and happy Monday, Walter. Happy Monday. And happy Monday, and happy Monday to all the Culture Wave viewers. I'm Song Yujin. I'm Arirang News Culture Correspondent. So, Yujin, um, I kind of hinted it in the opening that we're going to talk about K tourism, mm -hmm. and that's going to be with you, but uh, on a slightly different angle than what you would usually expect when we talk about K tourism. So, what are we talking about today? <laughs> right, so, uh, so today I want to introduce a policy that took effect about three weeks ago here in Capital City. And the reason why I chose this topic is because although this is fairly well known among locals, it seems that many international visitors aren't familiar with it. So let's first take a look at what it is. Swarms of visitors are now a common sight in Seoul's Bukchon Hanok village. Tourists flock here to see the centuries old Hanok houses up close. While this historic village delights tourists, life for residents is far less pleasant. The noise, especially from rolling suitcases, disrupts our mornings and nights, especially since Hanok houses aren't well soundproofed. There's also the problem of littering, and shockingly, some visitors have even relieved themselves near our homes. Others have walked into our house, uninvited and taken photos inside. These issues, known as over-tourism, have taken a toll, causing the village's population to drop by 27.6 percent over the past decade. To address this, the government in July this year designated Bukchon as Korea's first special management area under the Tourism Promotion Act. Since 2018, we've set specific visiting hours for the village, and local residents have worked hard to enforce them. But without legal backing, they were often ignored. Now, with a legal framework in place, we can impose fines for violations. The village is now divided into three color-coded zones based on overcrowdedness with the strictest regulations in the red zone. So it's past 5 p.m. and I'm here in the red zone of the Bukchon Hanuk village where visitors aren't allowed to enter between 5 p.m. and 10 a.m. Now this area has been one of the most congested spots in the village because visitors come here to take photos in front of traditional Hanuk houses. At 5 p.m., monitoring personnel take to the streets, guiding visitors out of restricted areas. The curfew applies to those simply sightseeing, with exceptions made for those visiting stores, museums, or staying in Hano accommodation within the zone. Residents say they're already feeling a change. We're thrilled as we can finally have peaceful mornings and evenings. Tourists we spoke to understood the policy's purpose, but suggested clear guidance. People need supper time till uh, and have time to sleep and rest. So yeah, I think it makes sense uh, if there are hundreds of people around here, they couldn't rest. So yeah. I think, I think we could have done it if we Googled it a bit more. But uh, I mean, like there could be a sign like further outside, so you wouldn't have like walked already into the street. However, not everyone is on board. Some local business owners worry about the impact on their livelihoods. The district office needs to communicate more with local business owners. Instead of strict daily restrictions, a more flexible approach, like limiting visitors during specific periods, might work better. As over-tourism becomes a growing issue worldwide, Bukchon Hanuk Village's strategy offers a way to balance visitor experience with residents' quality of life. You know, if you try to get some sleep, uh, maybe early in the evening, mm -hmm. or you have to focus, really the tiniest noise can be a distraction. Right. But if you have like tourists uh, bustling around your home, I think this really is a necessary me measure. Mm -hmm. I think so as well, especially in that certain area. I've been there many, many times, and it must be really disturbing for a lot of the residents in mm. the area. Now, uh, Eugene, you slightly mentioned it, but over tourism is certainly not just a challenge for Korea. So, how are other countries in the world dealing with this? issue. Mm, right, so I want to mention two notable examples. One is Venice in Italy and the other one is Kyoto in Japan. Now starting with Venice, it became the very first city in the world to introduce an entrance fee for visitors who are trying to tour the city. So to provide a bit more information, from April to July this year, tourists were required to purchase a one-day ticket costing five euros, which is about five dollars and thirty cents. And the city plans to re-implement this policy next year, but this time doubling the fee to ten euros. So we'll see how that goes 
goes on. And meanwhile, over in Japan, its famous Kiyon Geisha district has also been grappling with littering, harassment of geishas, and overwhelming crowds. So in response, the city has restricted access to certain alleyways starting since April. Mm, you know, I think it's actually a good thing that Korea uh, is implementing this, these measures because it means uh, that we are having so many tourists just like in these mm -hmm. renowned big places right, like Venice, right? right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's really good to see that that is actually happening. But we've got to turn our, you know, back to Bukton especially. Mm -hmm. And are there any additional measures that the district office is planning to combat this over-tourism? Mm -hmm. Well, there actually is. So starting from January 2026, the district office is planning to restrict the passage of charter tour buses in the Bukchon area to address illegal parking and traffic congestion. So the restrictions will be in effect year-round, which includes weekends and holidays as well. And it will cover a 2.3-kilometer stretch of roads from Bukchon no 5 gear to Changdeokgung 1 gear. And exceptions will be made for commuter buses, shuttle buses, school buses, and neighborhood shuttle buses as well. But you don't have to be disappointed because visitors can still park outside the village and then tour on foot. And although this one, this rule is not legally enforced yet, I also want to mention that if you are planning to visit the Bukchon Hanok village, the vis village is encouraging visitors to avoid coming on Sundays as it has designated it as a rest day for the alleyways. Mm. I think that's a very good like plan just to have well, at least one day off for the for the residents to right. take a rest mm. from all the tourists. I mean, I have never lived in a place that is like that big uh, with many tourists, mm -hmm. not a big, uh, a big city. City. But uh, if I ever get to live in such a place, like I think Hebangchun is also one of those mm. places that has these uh, similar measures in the Itaewon area mm -hmm. or so. So I think in the near future, if we ever get to move to those places, uh, I think we can be at ease. And mm -hmm. that's a really great measure that you uh, not implemented, that you <laughs> introduced <laughs> us to. So we're looking forward to your uh, next coverage. Thank you very much, Eugene. Always a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. Eugene.